All right, welcome back. We'll continue with our um, lectures beyond uh, our foundational study of continuum mechanics, okay? In order to uh, legitimately call this series of lectures continuum physics, we should do some physics in addition to mechanics, okay? We'll embark on that today. And uh, however, we won't go too far from mechanics. The topic we're going to start today is um, thermomechanics. Okay, and um, as the term indicates, it is a uh, coupling of the fields of heat conduction and mechanics, right? And I, I ought to mention, I ought to make clear that when here when we say the coupling of heat conduction and mechanics, we are thinking of solid mechanics. Okay, so the setting is this. We have our basis. We have our continuum solid body. And in this case, and from now on for the next few segments. In addition to asking questions of what happens when the body deforms, we also want to include the effect of uh, heat transfer through the body as well as local heat production. Okay, so if the body is deforming and, uh, you know, in the process of its deforming, in addition to the mechanical loads imposed upon it, uh, there are also thermal loads, right? Maybe you're heating up some part of the body or maybe um, you, are, you have a um, heat source inside the body, okay? What happens? We'll also look at what happens uh, if the body is constituted of a material that um, has a coupling constitutively between the fields of, uh, between thermal and mechanical fields, okay? And we, we'll understand better what all of this means as we develop the the formulation. Okay, so um, perhaps the way to talk about it first is to, is to draw a uh, figure representative of the situation I just described. So we have our basis, we have the body in the reference configuration, and um, as before, let's assume that this part of the body is the is the traction boundary, okay? What we have here also is a situation where um, some part of the body, and um, let me denote it as that, okay? Maybe this subset of the boundary is a uh, subset such that over that subset we are specifying the heat, okay? Uh, a heat input, let's say, into the body. Now, we can uh, describe all of this in the, using the reference configuration as we've done for mechanics, right? Mechanics, of course, we've done it interchangeably, right? Between the reference and current configurations. But, um, in this case, uh, it turns out that while we can actually describe heat conduction perfectly well on the reference configuration, there is good reason to think of it uh, in an Eulerian setting, right? Really in the current configuration. So let's get the current configuration also into the picture. Okay, we have omega sub t. Our uh, Traction boundary subset is this one. All right, and we have our 
boundary subset where uh, we have heat specified, right? A, a heat input specified. Now, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to, well, all right, let's just call, call this also Q, okay? All right, so uh, what, so, so I'll say more about what we, what we are, what we are actually doing here, okay? So we're thinking of, uh, this is the boundary subset. with let's say heat influx specified okay and this heat influx is uh, specified per unit surface area Okay, and, and now of course omega, partial of omega sub T, sub capital T as before is the traction boundary. All right, now you recall that in the case of mechanics, we had to decompose the boundary into a traction boundary and a uh, displacement boundary, right? So this is the traction boundary subset properly, okay? So recall that this boundary, if we consider how we, we broke it up into boundary subsets for mechanics, Right, that's what we did, all right? And in the context of this picture, it gets a little difficult to show, but you should really think of uh, everything other than that boundary subset, okay, as constituting the displacement boundary. Okay, and we've talked about this, right? So what, what we also should state, um, actually to be completely correct is that this union of the traction and displacement boundary subsets is such that their intersection is the null set, okay? What this means is that you can't have a point on the boundary where we are trying to control the traction and the displacement, right? That would lead to an ill pose problem, okay? And, and, and even physically, you actually cannot do it, right? So it's, it's, it's really quite meaningful. Likewise, what we are going to do here is require that um, the same boundary, right? also admits a decomposition into this boundary subset which we've already introduced here, right, as the heat influx boundary, union the rest of the boundary which is uh, going to be denoted here as partial omega t sub theta where theta is the temperature. Okay, and these, so, so now the, the dotted or the dashed brackets give us the heat boundary subset and its complement, that's all the rest of it, right? All, everything else that you see on, on, the, on this figure, everything other than the, the, this boundary subset, right? Everything other than that on the boundary constitutes the, um, temperature boundary, okay? So as you can imagine, this is actually getting a little difficult to show here, but let me try to do a good job of it. 
Um, okay, so this makes up the traction boundary. All right, the rest of it. of that is the displacement boundary, okay? I'm going to take the risk of drawing inside the, the body now. This is what we've called the heat influx boundary. All the rest of it how far does it go? I'm sorry, it's going to have to jump over one of these. All of that is what I've called the temperature boundary, okay? Now, I apologize for the spaghetti-like appearance of that, of that diagram. You're not going to make much sense of it if you look at it uh, when it's a finished product. But uh, since this is a recording, you can always go backwards and forwards again and understand what all those boundaries are. Okay, so we have this decomposition into heat and temperature boundaries such that um, partial of omega t sub q intersection partial of omega t sub theta is also equal to the empty set. Okay. All right, okay, so um, let, let me state some things here. Partial of omega t sub theta is the temperature boundary subset. Okay, that's the part of the boundary where we are specifying the temperature. Now, when you look at those uh, decompositions we wrote in the previous slide, it should be clear from the figure, right, and actually from the way we wrote those decompositions, that um, there is really no need for a relation between those decompositions. We can have one decomposition of the boundary into traction and displacement boundary subsets, and a completely different decomposition into temperature and heat boundary subsets. Okay? So let me state that the decomposition of partial omega t into partial omega t sub q, which is the heat boundary subset, and partial omega t sub theta, which is the temperature boundary subset, is independent of the decomposition. of the boundary into the traction boundary subset and the displacement boundary subset. Okay? Now, in the context of our prop here, reference configuration, current configuration, now let's suppose that um, the traction boundary is, let me see, the orange part of this uh, ellipsoid, okay? The blue part is the displacement boundary. Their union makes up the, to the total boundary and they're disjoint, right? They have no intersection. Now, we could, for our uh, decomposition into heat and, th and temperature boundary subsets, choose something completely different. It could be the same, but it doesn't have to be. So in particular, you may think 
that the part of the, the boundary that you can see because of the projection of the ellipsoid from where you are sitting and where the screen is, the part of the boundary that you are able to see, you may choose to call the, the, the heat boundary subset, right? And the rest of it, its complement, is the temperature boundary subset. Observe that the heat boundary subset that you can see includes part of the, what did I say, the displacement boundary and part of the traction boundary. Likewise for the temperature boundary subset, right? It includes part of the displacement and part of the traction boundaries, okay? So these, these, these decompositions need have nothing to do with each other. They could be the same, but they don't have to be. What's important is that each decomposition, okay, the union of each decomposition gives us back the total boundary, and each decomposition individually be disjoint. Okay? All right.